Howdy all, I'm Adam the Renaissance Nerd, Gamergate 2. I think we can really actually start calling it Gamergate 2. I was asking that question a couple of weeks ago. Is this Gamergate 2? Where are we? How, are, how did we get here? We've analyzed that to death. Sweet Baby Inc. was the catalyst, not the source, just the catalyst. It is a symptom, something that's going on for a very long time, but because they felt they were untouchable, because these activist developers, these activists who have gotten their way into gaming amongst everything else, they feel as though they can do anything they want because they've gotten away with everything for so many years. The only problem is now that you're going after games and you're starting up Gamergate 2 by going after gamers trying to weaponize fake game journalism to go after the people who make the industry possible if there is one thing that is undeniable it is that gamers spend money we put the money down we'll drop 50 to 70 dollars on a game just like that without even a thought because we just want to have fun just want to enjoy ourselves, immerse ourselves in worlds that are fantastical. But no, no, these people, they want to beat you over the head with modernity. They want to make you current day until you die in Minecraft. Either way, it's the line has been drawn, guys. The line has been drawn. Gamers are pushing back. And we are now in that moment where the usual responses happen. Over the past few days... The expected responses to us winning have begun. What am I talking about? I'm talking about the fact that whenever we go on the attack, usually a counterattack, it's a counterpunch. Whenever we do that, it's, it's to level the playing field with facts, logic, receipts. We come bearing information. We come bearing evidence. But what do our opponents do? The leftist Marxists, the agenda-driven ideologues, well, they resort to threats. They resort to, as we're seeing today, shallow, pointless, groundless legal action. Let's get to start. A couple the other day, I think it was um Monday. Uh, this gal, because she her pronoun is a she, so I'll call her a her. Jules Hardy, some chick in England. My British friends, answer for this one. I don't know who she is. I ask you very simply. What is her what is her thing? Her thing is she's a host. She's a host about gaming. So she's a fake journo. Probably never played a game in her life. But here she comes. She weighs in on this as though she's somebody the rest of the world actually cares about. Says here in a tweet, can we agree that for round two of this, it can be the final purge? These kinds of gamers? In 2024, I've been arguing about this for decades. Can we have a last full detox of these dude so we can get back to the positive gaming community we have been creating? I want to touch on that word positive for a second. If you want to watch me really talk about how the word positive and positivity has become essentially a fake word, a word that is used to gaslight, a word that is that has no meaning anymore, catch me tonight. Natural 20, 7.30 p.m. Eastern, right here on this channel. I'm going to talk about that tonight. But she throws out that word positive. She says decades. But you notice the first line. Can we get a final purge? Wow. So violent. How, how come these people who preach inclusivity, who preach positivity, who preach can't we all just get along? Why don't we all just do this and this? Why do they always go to violence? That's my question. Why always violence? When we counterattack, we make silly jokes. They always seek violence against us. So there is the, the predictable response, violence. Now, what is she talking about? She's talking about black girl gamer, somebody who isn't sweet babying, but another part of the disease that has crept its way into gaming. Black girl gamers are now, they're the talk of the town because they've decided, hey, if you don't like us, you're more racism. That's the other thing that we could talk about. We'll come back to Black Girl Gamers in a second, but when their back is against the wall, what do you think they do? Everybody's a racist. Everybody's a bigot. The last line of defense of the weak argument. 
name calling and not the fun name calling we do where we meme and we have a good time. No, they are intentionally trying to paint us as evil so that they can build a cancel mob to bring us down. And that is why there's no surprise that the guy who worked on Borderlands 3, Sam Winkler, we are bounding into comics, who've collected the tweets for me. Thank you, bounding. He went on a little tirade the other day talking about racism in gaming because responding to this, a good narrative writer of any skin color can write a good character with another skin color without needing consultants. If your studio can't do that, get a better writer. That is true. As a writer of 20 plus years, well, I started as a wee teenage lad. I had very little life experience, but I knew people of many shapes, sizes, and colors. And what do you think I did? I simply looked at the world around me and adapted it. They didn't have to be white people. They could be anybody because guess what? In the end, it doesn't matter what your skin color is if you understand a person. You can write the character. You write their emotions, their feelings, their desires, their wants, their needs, their goals in life. If you're creating it, that's what the character is. The character isn't the skin color. The skin color merely means they maybe come from a different region of the world you're creating. But this idiot, I see this argument all the time against DEI and consultancy, and it just highlights the total misunderstanding of what being a good writer is. You don't somehow max out your stats and learn how to write every conceivable character, plot, or pro style. Part of that is actually true. You don't suddenly know how to do it. It takes years of practice. But it has nothing to do with skin color. It has to do with understanding people, men and women. See what I did there? Men and women of all shapes, sizes, and walks of life. If you can get into their head just a little bit, you can write that character. I have written many female characters. I have written many characters of diverse nature in my time. And I didn't need to be them to understand them because it's a character. It's not the skin color. But idiots like this only see skin color. He goes on. Knowing you can't, aren't ready, or aren't the right person to write something is one of the chief skills for a pro writer. Ideally, you have a team that can cover all your bases, but if you have a gap, you hire an outside expert, just like in literally any fucking other industry. Uh, no. No, 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 no. If you are a good writer, you're writing, as I said a moment ago, the character. The skin color has nothing to do with it, but they don't understand this because they are shallow. They aren't deep. They only care about race, gender, sexuality. I am shocked. Shocked. Well, not that shocked. He keeps going. Just further evidence that 99.99% .99 of the people spewing this shit have never created a single thing in their lives that they're proud of, and the rest are just straight up bigots. Wow, look at that. We're back to the name calling because you have no defense. You have no ability to understand what's going on. See, that proves this guy isn't an actual writer because he doesn't understand what goes on in the mind of different human beings. I can understand what's going on in his mind just fine. He's insane. He's crazy. And he's just as crazy as the girls at Black Girl Gamers who have decided to sue Park Place. This page I'm on right now claiming that they are defaming the company by simply reporting on the very shit that they post on X Twitter. Well, anybody can post on X Twitter, including people that, are, that have had experience with Black Girl Gamers. Gothix, you know her. She's a member of the Fellowship. As a former Black Girl Gamers member, I can confidently say these people are full of crap. They do not care about diversity. They promptly kicked me out for being anti-black, a.k.a. not making an idol out of my skin color and refusing to hate white people. It's all about the grift with people like Black Girl Gaming, Sweet Baby Inc. It's a victimhood industry. They try to play off the fact that, oh my God, we're oppressed. You need to hire us to show you why we're oppressed. And if you don't, we're going to cancel you. That is the bottom line. The grift. They don't want us to know about any stuff. Gamergate 2 is not about games. It's not about gamers. It's about the grift being once and for all revealed, exposed for the hoax that it is. You don't need people of color to write people of color 
You don't need people who have experienced this thing to do that thing. A good writer can create something, create a character, create a story, and then add the layers as they see fit to make sure that maybe this character comes from this part of this world we've created. So, of course, their skin color might be different. Their features might be a little different. They may have a sexual preference that doesn't matter because that's just it. It never really matters. Characters are not defined by who they F and what their skin color is. It's not how it works when you create something. But they don't understand that. And that is their fear that the revelation that they're fake, they're grifters, that they're only out to squeeze companies from money so that they can push ideology and corrupt and indoctrinate. That is the fear. That is what matters most in all of this. Shine a light on the grift. Show them for the ideologues, the far leftist Marxists that they are, and now watch them threaten you and call you names because that's the only weapon left in their arsenal. But we are not going to back down because us gamers, us true fans, us passionate fans, we have the ability to stand firm, never bend the knee, never give them an inch, never apologize because in the end, we are legion and they are nothing. All right, I'm done. Thank you for watching this video. If you enjoyed it, hit that like button. Subscribe to this channel. Let me earn your trust through facts and logic because I don't care about whiny SJW fees. Thank you again for watching. Take it easy. Thanks for watching, everybody. If you'd like to reach out to me, please email me at therandnerd at gmail.com for all channel business purposes. I am on Twitter now, mostly for promotion and sharing of videos, maybe a little shit stirring here and there. Who knows? At the Ren Nerd. You can also find me at the Geeks and Gamers forums under at Roas, and you can see me on Rumble and Odyssey under the Renaissance Nerd. Thanks again for watching. Take it easy.